sell my soul to demons. You did? When did you do that? Last night. Last night? On June the 10th, 2014, deputies responded to the area of Hay Street and U Street in reference to a welfare check. Matthew Warren, who was 32, told deputies there was a deceased person inside his house. Officers checked the residence and located Angela Cook, who was deceased. The police then bring him in for questioning. Now this interrogation gave me the creeps and his behavior may confuse you, but do watch till the end as I also have the interview of someone who knew Matthew and his behavior may make sense to you. What's the name, Matt? Do you go by Matt or Matthew? Would you like to have a seat? Okay, that's fine. Do you mind if I sit down? No. Okay. All right, Matthew, what's your last name? Warren. Warren? Okay. Where are you from? Mississippi. Mississippi? What part of Mississippi? Uh, Cleveland. Mount Bayou. I got you. Did you go to high school there and everything? Yes. Gotcha. Did you play any sports in high school? No. No? Were you just a student or did you run track or anything? Student. I gotcha. Were you in the military at all? Yeah. What branch did you serve in? Army. Army. What'd you do in the Army? Flight ops. I gotcha. Well, what is that exactly? I don't know much. About, I wasn't in the military, so I don't know much about that. What does that job entail? It's an aviation operations specialist. It's um, doing paperwork for pilots. Like their flight plans or? Yes. I got you. Um, how long were you in the military? I was mostly... I was mostly setting up tents and stuff. Do what now? I was mostly uh, setting up tents and stuff. I got you. Um, how did you wind up talking to the police today? Uh, policeman. Um, made a, a routine stop when he saw me walking or walking up the street barefooted with um blood on my shorts okay um how'd you what'd you say to the police officer i told him that um that i that i had uh, murdered someone oh okay is that why you had the blood on your shirt on your shorts he noticed that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, is that why you had blood on your shorts from murdering somebody? Yes. Okay. Uh, when did you do this? Today. Today. Do you remember about what time? Afternoon. Okay. So it was after lunch sometime? Mm, maybe. Okay. Um, where did you meet this person or come in contact with this person? Uh, she was walking by the um, place there. By your house? Yes. Oh, okay. Do you know her or? Now what I said about his behavior, does it make sense to you now? He's been standing the whole time, 
he's been talking very slowly and i can't quite figure out what's going on either way it gives me the creeps now i just wanted to share today's sponsor with you scentbird are a fragrant subscription service you get a lovely bottle in a cover this month they sent me the initio and you just twist it around and then you spray it on yourself this has helped me with the ladies otherwise i'm hopeless they have prada and gucci and versace cologne brands and with code truered 55 you get 55 percent off your first month scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just 17 dollars every month you get to pick what you want to receive so there are no surprises link is in the description no no okay um it was a female? Yes. Okay. Um, how did you get her to come into your house? I asked her if she could help me um, with my air conditioning. Oh, okay. Then what happened? And then uh, we went back in the back room there where the blood was on the floor. And um, I started in the neck. Okay. What were you standing in the neck with? The knife that was on the floor there in the room. Can you describe the knife to me? Black knife, three silver circles. Okay. About six feet. So it's got like a black handle on it? Yeah. About how long is it, you think? Probably about six feet. Six, um, probably six, six inches. Six inches, okay. Um, then what'd you do? Then I, um, then I, um, then I undressed her and proceeded to uh, wrap her in a, um, in um, air mattress and, and uh, tarp. Oh, okay. Uh, what'd you do then? Then I, um, then I tied, her, tied the tarp up around her and went down the street and got a, um, a recycling, a recycling bin. I mean, it, it's okay, just take your time. Like one of those recycling trash cans? Is mm -hmm. that what you're trying to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why, why'd you go down the road and get one? Because uh, the one that, it, that, I, that I used there at the, um, was, um, it was too small. Oh, okay. I got that one from the one down there on uh, Cross Street over there, um, right at the intersection of Cross and uh, um, T Street. Is that T Street there, kind of no, by the bar? The the next the next intersection on Cross. Oh, okay. Um. So you said your can was too small, so you had to find a bigger one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so you went and found a can, I guess, that you thought was big enough, and did you bring it back to your house? Yes. Okay. Um, what'd you do then? Oh, I took some uh, some uh, shower or two. Because uh, there's a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. After you got done taking a shower, what'd you do? Did you do anything after you took a shower? Matthew, uh, did, when did you put her in the trash can? Before you took a shower or after? Before. 
before and after. No, before and then um, um, the struggle that, that, that happened and then... Um, Talking about a struggle, when was the struggle? When you're talking about a struggle, are you talking about when you were stabbing her? Yes. Okay. How many times do you think you stabbed her? Maybe 10 or 15. Okay. Now, did you just stab her or did you like cut her up in pieces or what did you do? Stabbed her in the neck. Okay. So you didn't cut her up in any pieces? No. Okay. Why did you do this? Can you tell me why? Did she say something to you or do something to you that made you want to do this to her? Did you hear me? What was that? Why did you do this to her? Did she say something or do something to you that made you want to do this to her? I mean, you're the only one who can tell me this, Matthew, okay? She's not here, so I need you to tell me what happened, okay? So I can figure this out, okay? I sold my soul. Okay. To who? Gangster boo. Okay. What does, uh... So let's go back to the question I was asking you before. What what made you do this to this person? Did she do something to you that made you do this? Or tell me tell me how all this happened and why. Did, do you understand what I'm asking you, Matthew? Matthew, can you look at me? Let me ask you this. Have you ever seen this person before? Matthew. Have you ever seen this lady before? No. No? Okay. So she was just kind of walking by your house? Yes. How long were you in the military? Three and a half years. Three and a half years? Mm -hmm. Where were you when you were in the military? Were you overseas or where were you stationed? Do you remember where you were stationed? Uh, Fort, Fort Knox. Okay. Did you ever go overseas? Fort, Fort Rucker and uh, Fort Hood in uh, Germany. Oh, okay. So you got to go overseas and travel a little bit? Yes. Did you enjoy that? I think it'd be pretty cool to go to Germany. I've never been there. Did you like it over there? It was nice. What did you like about it? Um, the men were nice. What about the ladies? Were they nice too? No, I'm not so sure. Okay. Did you do anything interesting while you were over in Germany? Any cool sights or anything like that that you got to see? Huh? Hmm. Any cool sites, that, any interesting places you get to see or things that you did that were pretty interesting? 
over in Germany. Oh, it's a station at Ellersheim and there's a town, Bedford Shine next to it, and, and, and we used to, I went to uh, Nuremberg and and um, had some um, nice castles there. It's pretty neat. Did you get to go in any of them? Why did you get out of the military? Um, it was a um, medical discharge. Oh, okay. What happened? Did you get injured or something? My um, my shoulder and um, my, my hip and, and uh, having a knee problem. And, I got you. And, and um, What were you going to say? What were you going to say, Matthew? What was the question? We were talking about why you got discharged and you were telling me about your shoulder and hip and knee problem. And you're about to say something else. You know, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia less than a year later. Okay. And After you got out of the military? Yes. Okay. What do you think caused that? Pardon me? What do you think caused that? Um... Marijuana or a chemical imbalance, maybe. So you used to use some drugs? When I was in high school, but... Um, Do you still use drugs now? I used to smoke a lot of weed in high school. I got you. Do you, do, do you use any drugs now? You smoke a little weed now or no? No. Do you do any kind of illegal drugs? No. Okay. Um, do you feel bad about what you did to this lady? Sold my soul to beings. You did? When did you do that? Last night. Last night? So do you feel bad about that? I'm going to be in hell for eternity. Okay. Matthew, let me ask you this. Do you feel bad at all about what you did to that lady? Of course not. She was just a prostitute. Okay. So that's that's what prostitutes uh, deserve? Is that what you think? Can you answer me? Let me ask you this, Matthew. What made you want to do that to this prostitute? She's just a prostitute, just like I am. How are you a prostitute? Explain that to me. Because I don't understand that. Can you explain to me how you're a prostitute? 
I didn't hear you. What'd you say? What were you going to say, Matthew? Is that your house where you live? Is that your house where you live, Matthew, where this happened? What's your address where you live, Matthew? What's the matter? I sold my soul for eternity. To who? Who'd you sell your soul to? To a... To a what? What are those marks on your neck, Matthew? What are those from? On the side of your neck right there. Previous um, attempts. Okay. So, how did you meet this lady again? Matthew, look at me. I can tell that you feel bad about this, okay? So, why don't you just tell me what all happened and why you did this? I can look at you and tell you when to get this off your chest, okay? Don't you think you'd feel better if you got this off your chest? Huh? I mean, I can tell you're upset about it. Are you upset about this? Is it causing you pain? What's bothering you? Matthew, why don't you sit down and take a deep breath? You want to sit down? Do you feel bad about this, Matthew? Ambivalent. Huh? Ambivalent. Okay. Would you like me to give you a few minutes and then I'll come back in and talk to you some more? That'd be all right. I'm fine. Do you want to answer my question? Well, what was the question? I can tell that this is bothering you, okay? <laughs> can you tell me why you did that? I had a bloodlust. Okay. And when did that come about? While I was selling my soul. Okay. How did it come about that you sold your soul? Tell me about that. How did you do that or how were you approached about that? Who approached you about selling your soul? Matthew, look. Look at me. 
Matthew, you got to help me understand what's going on here, okay? So in order for that to happen, you got you, I need you to tell me what happened, okay? So I can understand what's going on. So how'd you sell your soul? Did you have sex with this lady? No. No? How do you know she was a prostitute then? She was looking for some drugs. Well, that doesn't make her a prostitute. That makes her a drug addict or a drug user. How do you know she was a prostitute? I propositioned her about, um, about, um, about, about fuck, um, fucking her. What'd she say about that? She said it was fine, but she wanted it so many amounts of dollars, but I didn't know. I can't recall exactly how many, maybe around 20. Okay, so you asked her how much it'd be to have sex with her. She told you twenty dollars. Was this before you went in the house or after y'all were in your house? After I um, asked her to come in to help me check on my AC. Okay. Now before. You asked her to come in to check on your AC. Did you already know what you were going to do? Did you already know what you were going to do to her, Matthew, and you had already made that up in your mind? Matthew, why don't you sit down? Can you tell me that? Did you already know you were going to kill her? When, when you were talking to this lady and you were going to get her to come into your house, did you already have in your mind what you were going to do to her before she came in? Do you want anything to drink, Matthew? No. Okay, are you okay? I can't have anything to drink. Okay, are you okay? Do you feel okay right now? Huh? Matthew, simple question, yes or no? Do you feel okay right now? Matthew, look at me. You feel okay? Yes. Okay. So let's get back to what we were talking about. You... You said you saw this girl walking in front of your house. Is that correct? You told me earlier you saw her walking by and you asked her to come help with your air condition. Is that correct? All right, I'll be back in just a second, okay?
Hey, Matthew. What are you doing? You okay? Yes. Would you like me to bring you a glass of water? Uh, I can't. You look thirsty. No, I really can't. Okay. Can you have a seat in that chair for me? I don't want to. Okay. Can you at least, do you want to stand back up? Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a lady come in in a minute and she's going to take some pictures of you. And uh, then uh, we'll get you out of here, okay? Sound good? Okay. All right. We'll be back with you in just a second, okay? So tell me again what you did in the military. What what all was involved in the flight ops or whatever that you did? Can you tell me more about that? Let me ask you this. Where does your dad live? Now by you, Memphis. Okay. Do you want me to try and get a hold of him? I, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Okay, but do you want me to let your dad know what's going on or no? No. Okay. You know he'll probably find out eventually. No, he shouldn't. Okay. Now we have the interview of Ronald Dubois. Ronald worked for the VA and he also knew Matthew Warren. This is his character presentation of Matthew. Like I said, I just wanted to get you to come down so I could talk to you about uh, Matthew Warren. How long have you known uh, Matthew? Uh, since uh, June 2012. Okay. So you've known him for about two years. Yes. Okay. What did you do for him? Uh, his fiduciary. Uh, the VA appointed a, a fiduciary to take care of paying his bills and his money management skills weren't really up to par. And, uh, his brother was appointed as fiduciary when he first was uh, you know, given 100% benefit. Right. And he was living in Seattle when he moved down here. Uh, his brother was removed and and we were appointed as his fiduciary. That's basically all it is. Just okay. for VA, VA benefits, no no personal stuff or anything like that. Just Do you know anything about his medical conditions or anything? Uh, just what he's told me before. Uh, he was treated at uh, the VA hospital in Seattle and, and a VA hospital here, schizophrenia and you know, psychosis or psychiatrist. He was seeing a psychiatrist here in the, at the VA Medical Clinic, Mental Health Unit. Uh, okay. Do you know who that was? The doctor? No, I do not. And to be perfectly honest with you, the position that I'm in, they wouldn't tell me. <laughs> he was seeing one at the VA clinic here on the base or where? Uh, the, the VA, VA hospital. On the base? Well, I guess that it's on the base. It's not really on the base. It's uh, near the Navy Hospital on 98. Okay. On the west side. Would, would Matthew ever call you if he was having problems with his medication or anything like that? No. No? He, he never, never has. Uh, well, let me ask you this. I, Go ahead. What were I, you? I do know he he was Baker acted twice in the last couple of years. Okay. okay. And conversation when he'd come out is you know his his medication as long as he stayed on his medication everything seemed to be fine but uh, he seemed also seemed to have a problem you know at like six months first time then six months later uh, where he would forget to take his medication and then he would. He would go downhill, and then something would come up. He'd get stopped, or uh, I believe the, on the Navy base they they stopped him. I don't know whether he was driving erratically or just the way he was talking. Probably that uh, they they called and had him Baker acted there too. 
Okay. He was, he's always been slow to speak, uh, like sort of slow. So if, if you know him, you know that, you know, that's, that's just him. But I've, I've never really seen him where he was in a crisis or anything like that. I got you. Um, the, how I got your name was through, I guess, his landlords. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of, and correct me if I'm wrong, they kind of told me like if they were having a problem with him or anything like that, that they would call you and usually somehow you took care of it. Right. Uh, the only time we ever had a problem with the, the Scullies uh, was his air conditioning went out and he, when they had a repairman come out, he wasn't there. Well, uh, I told him, you know, I, I'm going to call, call him and make sure that he's there. If he's not there, then I'll, I'll be there too to make sure that the man can come in. Uh, he, he would talk to me if, you know, if, if I called him, but he knew who I was and, yeah. uh, he would, he would answer questions. He would do whatever I would, I would ask. No, not a problem. Was he pretty aware of what was going on in life and everything you think? No, I, I, I wouldn't say anything. Uh, he want to move to Seattle and then the next week he decided he didn't want to move to Seattle. Then he wanted to move to Alaska. Then a week later, he didn't want to move to Alaska. He just wanted to go to va on vacation in Alaska where he was in the military. A week later, he decided he didn't want to go on vacation there. He wanted to move to Seattle. A week later, that, 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 and then he wanted to go on vacation on a cruise to Puerto Rico. And a week later, yeah, you know, he just, whatever, whatever the move, the move at the time, whatever the mood at the time you know, went. Did uh, did the Scullies ever have to call you and tell you that uh, they were having any problems with him as far as maybe he was off his medication or anything? No. That, no? no they okay. never did. Okay. They made it sound like if they had any problems, they called you and you. Well, that's, uh, as his fiduciary, if there was any, any problems, they... They knew they could call me. Okay. Okay. And and as an more or less as an intermediary for running the house, that that's that's pretty much all it was. Gotcha. So you had not? Did you have anything to do with getting his medication prescribed or anything like that? And I had no idea what he was taking. No. Okay. None whatsoever. All right. Strictly money management. How was he with his money? Well, uh, I I don't mind showing you the last accounting. But, you know, I, I got a copy to the VA on it and they audited. So he would. How much money would he get a year? Uh, Twenty-one thousand. Well, actually, it's uh, more than that. It was like thirty-four, right? Uh, Two different amounts. Thirty-five. Yeah, uh, that include uh, his interest. Yes, thirty-five thousand. Okay. And he he was allowed it. I'd, I'd write a check for his personal expenses every week. He would get two hundred and twenty-five dollars, and all of his bill bills got paid. He was on Social Security also. I don't know how much it was, but that went direct to him. I I had no. Okay. No, nothing on that. All right. If his car would would break down or whatever, we'd pay to get it fixed. Gotcha. So y'all were just basically money managers for it? That's it. Um, the other gentleman on the card, did he have any dealings with him? Eric Cook? No, none whatsoever. Okay. I don't think he's ever really met him either. All right. Eric Cook is my stepson. Okay, so okay, gotcha. we, we were doing this just, just to help people and then, you know, just formalize it and get registered with the state and create gotcha. a company. 
Okay. Is there anything I haven't asked you about, Matthew, you think you can tell me? No, he, he, t he just needed the help, and that, that's all we're doing. I, okay. Maybe, I've, I've met, met up with him a few times to, you know, to get his car fixed, buy a lot more from the pawn shop, you know, think, little things like that over the last two years. He just... So you didn't have a whole lot of contact with him? Not, no, I wouldn't say How so. often would you have contact with him, you think? Once a month? Uh, only if he initiated it. It, it would really, it, it could go three months, and not even, but with okay. him, you know, because he wants to go on vacation or wants to move, you know. It, but personal contact, maybe once every one to three months. Uh, but on the phone? On the phone, whenever he'd feel like it, it would go, you know, two months without a phone call, and then it might be every two days because he wants to move and wants to provide, you know, how much U-Haul would have, and he'd go all out on it. Just knew what he wanted to do, how much U-Haul would cost, how much the gas would cost, and I, I would I, be perfectly honest with you. I would go along with him. Let, let's go ahead and get the cost of the gas, motel rooms, uh, the cost for the U-Haul, the, the entire thing, and stretch it out and give him time to change his mind. Gotcha. All right. <clears throat> so it seemed, from what Ronald said, Matthew was suffering from severe mental illness. But you know what's weird? So I went to the Department of Corrections in Florida on their website. I couldn't find anything regarding Matthew. I contacted the local police. They told me, go to the Escambia County Court Clerk and they can tell you what happened. They didn't have anything. I couldn't find his name. Uh, so I don't know if he was imprisoned, not guilty by reason of insanity, or if he was just let go free. So why don't you comment? What do you think happened? I'd like to once again thank Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Please use code TRUERED55 for 55% off. Link is in the description.